All right, so now that we are familiar with the different point IO building blocks as well as the different input and output cards, it is time for us to connect to this module from the network as well as from the PLC. So what you'll probably have already noticed is at the top left corner, you have this little numbering pad, which currently is set to 009. And the reason for that is that if you set an IP address for the last octet, which is up to 264, then you're able to essentially put this point IO module on a private subnet. And in the default case, this is going to be set to 999, which allows you to set the point IO IP address to any IP address that you desire through the utility, which is called boot P. And we're going to look at both of those options in this video. So before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. First, I'm going to set through boot P. And as you can see, I do have that 999 set. I don't know how well you can see on your screen right now, but I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And the network connection is not established. When you make changes to this setting, you do need to have, you do need to power down. And the easiest way to power down is essentially to remove this power adapter and then plug it back in so that the changes can take effect. And of course, in order to be able to use boot P, we are going to connect through this ethernet cable to our laptop, which is currently running boot P as well as our slings. And we're going to be able to see this device in operation and set the IP address accordingly. So let's, let's switch over to the computer and see how we can do exactly that. So we are going to start by changing the IP address on our ethernet card. So in this search bar, I'm just going to type in network. And I'm going to look for this network and sharing center. Alternatively, you can type in your control panel and navigate to it through that. So this window is going to come up. And from here, we can do change adapter settings. You do need to find the right adapter. If you have a virtual machines on your computer, you're going to have more than one adapter. But essentially, I already know that it's going to be this Ethernet unidentified network. I'm just going to double click this, select properties. And from here, I should be able to give my computer a dynamic IP. So obtain an IP address automatically. Make sure that this is automatic as well. I'm going to hit OK, hit OK, and then close this section right here. The next thing that we're going to do is launch the boot P utility. So I'm just going to go back into the search bar and type in boot. And you'll notice that there's going to be this boot P DHCP tool icon, which we're going to select. From here, I'm going to select the same Ethernet adapter that we've just configured. I'm going to hit on OK. And we should start noticing the IP address of this point IO block to essentially come up. It's going to be a an IP address which is not going to be assigned. You will notice this by the fact that the type should be boot P. We are going to wait for it for a couple of minutes. Usually it comes up within two minutes. If not, then there's definitely something wrong with it. The indicator light here is green, which means that it's definitely on the network and it's connected. So let's just give it a little bit of time and we should be able to see it come up. You can always clear history and then wait for it just a few more minutes. So I did forgot to mention one important detail, and that is the fact that your boot P tool will find a lot of different MAC addresses, especially if you're connected to a network with other devices. In order to make sure that you're using the right MAC address, you do need to look on the side of the module. And once we zoom in, you will notice that there is going to be a MAC address sticker, and it's going to indicate F4. 54, 33, 9B, 0, 0, and then 49. So that specific MAC address needs to match what you select in your boot P utility in order to make sure that you're going to give the IP address to the right module and not something else on your network. The other thing that I recommend highly when you're working in a production environment is that you connect to these modules individually in order to avoid making mistakes 
by connecting all of them to, for example, a switch. And then you're just going to get a lot of different devices in here. So in any case, here I have the MAC address of the device as well as a MAC address of my Ethernet card. And I do need to select the proper MAC address in order to give it an IP address. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to select it. I'm going to click on add relation and here I'm going to once again double check that the MAC address is matching the device that I have in the field and of course I do need to give it an IP address so in my case I'm going to just give it a public uh, sorry a private IP address 192.168.1.9 that being said you don't necessarily need to give any IP address to this module that is on the private subnet so you can give it any four octets that you desire and I'm just going to hit OK. You'll notice that it will appear here. But the problem is that it immediately tells it the IP address. And if you try to disable boot PDHCP, you'll notice that there's going to be this unable to service DHCP request. And that's because your computer is no longer on the same subnet. So we need to once again go into our search bar and type in network and go into the network and sharing center. And here we do need to go on the same subnet as the module or the address that we're trying to give it so i'm going to go into properties change the the ip address version 4 and this is me giving the ip address to my computer so 192.168.1.200 and the last octet is not important as long as it's not conflicting with anything else on your network click ok click ok click close and let's go back into the boot p tool and you'll notice that it did take the IP address and what we can do here is we're going to click this disable and you'll notice that the sent message is being confirmed that everything has been taken by this point IO rec as expected and it now has the IP address of 192.168.1.9 the way we can verify this is we can go into our command prompt type in ping 192.168.1.9 and as you can see, the module responds as expected. Now, that's the way to set the IP address if it's not going to be on the private network, even though we gave it a private network IP address. Now, the other thing that I want to demonstrate is that this thumb wheel gives you the flexibility to set the IP address without having to go into the settings if the IP address is on the private network. So I'm going to, first of all, unplug this cable. I'm also going to power down the module you do want to power down prior to making changes or after you finish making them. So here, instead of this triple nine, I'm going to set to 11. So let's see here, I'm just going to press down. And of course, the nine cycles back to zero. And here, for example, let's go like I said to 11. So 0 0.11. Let's just zoom in a little bit better into the camera. As you can see, it is set to 11. And this means that the module is going to take the IP address of 192.168.1.11, which is a private subnet. And usually the reason why you'd want to do this is that if you have an outage at your plant, which occurs very rarely with this specific module, but if you do have an outage, you can have anybody preset these thumb wheels to the numbers or simply a mechanic essentially set that same IP address just by pressing on these physical switches and they don't need a laptop or any other device in order to change the IP address. So now that we've done that, let's see what that looks like. Let's just ping that specific IP address and see if it took. So that 11, as you can see, is the new IP address which has been stored on the module and it is now set to dot 11. I am going to change it to dot nine again, just because that's the IP address I had assigned to it for some other purposes. But this is the way to effectively set this IP address without having the need to use boot P or DHCP and allow, like I said, people on the floor to be able to do quick swap outs without the need of laptops or any other softwares. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.